Um, hello, everyone. Thanks for, for having me here. Uh, my name is Mario Lovic. I'm from, yeah, COPSEC is the short name. It's now part of the Region H Hospital. And uh, there were quite a lot of people involved in this process. Um, so a few notes about me. I'm, I'm from Croatia. Um, I have a, a chemi chemical background. I uh, did a PhD in computational toxicology. And now I'm working for both uh, COPSEC or Region Age and No Center in Austria, which is an AI competence center. Um, so the research questions we're trying to answer in COPSEC, among others, are um, whether the metabolites found in children's blood um, are, have some kind of uh, biological activity, which could also be toxic, um, how to estimate that toxicity, and um, can we associate their activity with um, known diseases? Um, the reason why we're doing it is um, basically for uh, children's health. So uh, we want kind of earlier diagnostics. We want to support therapy. And COPSEC has uh, two cohorts. One of those is uh, the COPSEC 2010 cohort, which is an unselected mother-child birth cohort, uh, which has 700 children. So um, there were... Uh, five time points when um, the metabolome was uh, sampled. Um, we have 600 uh, mother-child pairs for the metabolome and in total um, 828 um, metabolites. Um, this is kind of the grouping of, of the metabolites. So mostly it's lipids, then we have a lot of amino acids. There's some xenobiotics, nucleotides, vitamins. And if we um, PCA it, then it looks kind of like this, the time point. So, we see kind of mothers, uh, two time points are quite close to each other and a bit separated from the children ones. So we see kind of the, how the chemistry is changing um, while during uh, the child's growth. Um, so how do we estimate uh, toxicity of metabolites? Best way would be kind of to, to measure it all, uh, but it's kind of uh, an expensive thing to do. So uh, instead we're building models. Basically it costs um, a lot of money. So uh, with models, we can kind of have a quick fix on estimating that. Um, there is a lot of extrapolation here. So it's kind of all model-based and we have two phases in this. So we have the model phase where we build models which can estimate toxicity from chemical structures. So uh, the assumption is that toxicity or biological activity is a function of chemical structures. So um, I'll talk more later about the data set, but this is kind of the first part. So to build a machine learning model, chemical structure to toxicity. And then the second part, the extrapolation phase is where I apply these models to understand whether the metabolites might be uh, biologically active. So let's first talk about the model phase. So um, I need a lot of toxicity data so to, to be able to build a model. And in general, toxicity data is quite scarce. So um, in PubChem, if you take a look, there are kind of around 100 million known chemical compounds Whereas uh, kind of high quality papers, they build their models on thousand-ish uh, chemical compounds. So th there's the kind of large gap between the chemical compounds which we know and which we can measure and quantify and those where we kind of have toxicological data. Um, it's uh, it's uh, quite a process to kind of prepare the data for the model. So first we kind of get the data out of a database, for example, PubChem. There's many essays. Um, we need to kind of have uh, insights into their structures. There's a lot of visual checking, standardization of the structures, uh, removing duplicates, fragments, inorganic molecules from the databases. And then we need to calculate features. Um, the database uh, I am using is the TOX21 database. Um, it has uh, many more essays than, than, the one, than the ones I've been using here. Uh, but those uh, are nuclear receptor and stress response databases. So it's kind of important processes in the in the body. And for this reason, the Environmental Protection Agency has chosen these assays kind of to be representative of uh, general toxicity in uh, bodies. Um, if you if you take a look at the table, uh, there is a huge imbalance between uh, inactive and active compounds against these assays. So uh, we have usually, um, after I've cleaned the data set, there are around 8,000 unique chemical compounds. And um, usually five to, to 7,000 of the chemical compounds per assay are uh, 
not active, whereas I have kind of up to thousand active compounds. So there is there is an imbalance in the in the data set. So uh, I have twelve essays, meaning for the models, it's twelve models, twelve, 12 targets. Um, so this is kind of what it looks like. So I have twelve columns, uh, zeros and ones, meaning a compound is active or not active in a in a certain essay or against a certain target, and then. Um, we we kind of extract the smile structures of, of each compound. So uh, per column, there will be a machine learning model in the end. Uh, data preparation is a hassle, uh, basically because uh, the compounds which were used were kind of salts or uh, um, kind of um, can also be kind of a double salt. So these are uh, they often have uh, kind of parts which we um, kind of think of not being active. So if it's a sulfate, you don't think that the sulfate part is the active one in a in a in a biological process. So you kind of have to extract the the active part of the molecule. And um, you see many of those have kind of these uh, these parts where um, which might not be relevant for the model. So this is kind of a zinc double salt. We have a, a chlorine here. So, so you have to clean it to, to get kind of the, the biologically active part. At least this is the, the assumption. Um, then you get kind of 3D um, molecules. Uh, and um, we have to calculate chemical representation. So we need to have a table of um, the, the features of these molecules. So we're trying to relate the features of molecules with biological activity. So we can either do uh, kind of molecular descriptors. Uh, a descriptor can be, for example, molecular weight, molecular volume, uh, polarity, or we can do uh, molecular fingerprints. And fingerprints are um, substructures, basically. So it's kind of a hashing algorithm which which is giving uh, substructures of a molecule. So what we what we get here is kind of uh, tables again with uh, per chemical compound. Uh, whether a certain fingerprint is present or not. So this is kind of the data we, we use for building the toxicity models. Um, important to mention are model metrics. So I guess uh, most of you have heard of, of accuracy, but accuracy is kind of um, um, not the best metric for imbalanced data sets. So um, it, we, we, we can use others like balanced accuracy, the kappa coin score, I use the metrics correlation coefficient. So this is kind of more sensitive to imbalanced data set than uh, accuracy is. Um, the models, so I have 12 of those. Uh, all of them were kind of uh, optimized for the hyperparameters. So I used random forest. Um, it's kind of a bunch of decision trees in the models. And these are the parameters I, I, um, I sample from. So I'm trying to not, not to have kind of overly complex models. And I use Bayesian optimization and, and the metrics correlation coefficient as a metric to kind of get the best out of my data. Um, I tried the uh, 40 iterations on, on the tra uh, train sets so of different combinations of, of the, the hyperparameters. And um, I have a lot of feature selection. So I'm trying not to have big models and complex models, but kind of um, more explainable and um, lightweight. And I do a test set on the model. Um, this is this is a slide just on, on 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 the metrics. So it's very relevant in a machine learning model which which metrics to use for for model validation. Um, so you see it can happen. It's um, uh, down there on the left side. So you see it can happen that we have a hundred percent accuracy model, whereas the the metrics correlation coefficient so shows it's a random model basically because accuracy is not sensitive to false positives and false negatives comparing to other metrics. So the, the go-to message from here is metrics uh, matter, especially for imbalanced data sets. And now the, the model results. So those are the models for toxicity. So the models which relate structure and uh, biological activity. And um, you see, we have the 12 essays and the, on the right side, there are the results for the, the validation set. So some models appear kind of to be random meaning there is no kind of good um, relationship between structure and, and the, the biological activity, meaning we, we can barely estimate biological activity if we know the structure of the molecule. For some models, uh, it's, um, it's a bit better. For example, here we have a, 
uh, 0.7 metrics correlation coefficient, meaning you know, the model has quite a good quality. Um, and now I have 12 models. And now I'm interested whether if I apply these 12 models uh, uh, to my metabolites in children's blood, whether I will find some of them kind of being uh, biologically active. So this is the whole idea. So I take the 12 models. Um, I take my metabolite data set. I, uh, um, there is a small chunk of Python code which extracts chemical structure from metabolite name. So I've uh, kind of uh, curated the metabolite names because they tend to be very complex. Um, and I feed them uh, to this algorithm and I get chemical structures for, for each of the metabolites. So from 828, there were, I think like 100 something which were unknown uh, metabolites. And uh, I could, um, there were 500 which were annotated and I could find them in PubChem. So out of the 800, I have 500 uh, molecular structures for 600 kids. Um, and now I apply these 12 models on, um, on the metabolites. So I have these pre-saved models. I calculate the same features. I need the same features. So molecular descriptors and fingerprints. And um, I, I run it on, on the metabolites. And this is just a chunk of the table. So I have my, my uh, biological targets, the the stress uh, response to nuclear receptors. And I see for uh, some of the metabolites, I get um, the probability of the molecule being biologically active against the target, which we kind of consider as being toxic because it's an important biological process. And if this molecule is blocking this um, uh, enzyme, for example, then uh, we, we call it toxic. Um, so I've excluded all the situations where um, I had a kind of probability of less than 0 0.5, meaning they're not considered being toxic against a certain target. So you see, for example, for the 16A hydroxy uh, DHEA, 3 sulfate, it's active against three um, targets. All of these target, uh, targets are uh, androgenic or estrogenic receptors. And this is kind of a sanity check for me because this is a very steroid like structure. And I see, I would expect that the steroid like, like structure is active against uh, estrogenic receptors. So this is kind of, you know, the model does, does uh, make sense to an extent. So now I have probabilities for each of the metabolites being active against each of the targets. <laughs> and I have 600 kids, which, which have uh, concentrations of the metabolites. So this is the data I'm working with right now. So I took an inspiration from a PhD, uh, which was on uh, toxicity estimation in, uh, in the environment. And we have this toxic unit. And this is the relationship between the found concentration of a uh, pollutant in the environment and its LC50 um, uh, uh, mortality um, estimation. Yeah. So uh, I kind of applied this philosophy on, on the metabolite data. So I have I have kind of concentrations. It's a semi-quantitative uh, uh, of the metabolites in children's blood, uh, and I don't have the LC50, but I have a probability of the compound being uh, having a potential of being being biologically active against all of those targets. So this is kind of my LC50 here. So I have this um, kind of coefficient, which is tox the, the toxic risk per child. So I take the metabolite concentration. And I take the probability of a compound being toxic. So it goes from 0 0.5 to 1, actually. So the, the higher the probability, the riskier the compound, the higher the concentration, the riskier the compound. And um, now I'm curious whether this kind of make any biological sense. So I tested it against the, the diseases. Um, I tested it against um, the, the five. We have many more in the database, but these are the five which were kind of uh, uh, interesting at this point. So we have asthma, atopy, um, kind of in infections, uh, then CRP, inflammation, um, and uh, sensitization against certain uh, allergens. Um, I did a linear regression model. So I have tox risk per child, 40 uh, metabolites, turned out to be uh, toxic, biologically active. And I tested it against CRP and it shows uh, an association. 
And then when I looked into the coefficients of this model, there were um, five which were kind of uh, very significant below 0 0.01. Um, and uh, we see cortisol is there. So cortisol was identified as kind of being uh, uh, active against many of the biological targets uh, uh, from the models. But I would also expect um, cortisol being um, associated with CRP. I see that there is a negative coefficient on vitamin A. So vitamin, we know it's it's useful for, for kind of uh, inflammation. So it does also make sense. And um, the, the, the two below are um, kind of bile acid coefficients, which can have a relationship with um, gut kind of infections, uh, uh, bowel diseases, et cetera. So, there, there could be some also sanity to this. Um, yeah, some conclusions. It's um, basically this whole method is a filter. So we have 800 metabolites. So it's kind of, those, there's a lot of noise out there. So what we were doing with this, we applied the tox models to uh, try to identify molecules which could have more of an effect against diseases uh, than, than others. Uh, there is a lot of error propagation here. So we were going from you know, um, chemical measurements, uh, quantification, which is uh, which is tricky. We have model building from tox data, which is also not 100% accurate when you do the experiment. So there are a lot of steps in between. So this has to be taken with care, uh, but it seems to be a useful method um, for, uh, for filtering out uh, metabolites. Thanks.